Hey everybody, it's Minius, and back in February of 2012, I thought the addition of multiplayer in Mass Effect 3 was a complete waste of time. Hundreds and hundreds of hours later, I realized that I was completely mistaken. Now the multiplayer in Mass Effect Andromeda is one of the things that I am most looking forward to, and I'm not alone. What? You're crazy! Recently, thanks to Game Informer, we got a bunch of details about Mass Effect Andromeda's multiplayer, and while much of it is a repeat of the multiplayer in Mass Effect 3, there are some little new things that really got my attention. First of all, a little background. The multiplayer in Andromeda does fit in with the story of the new Mass Effect, but we've been told many times that playing the multiplayer will not impact the story outcome like it did in Mass Effect 3. Multiplayer characters are part of the Apex Force, which is a militia strike team from the Nexus, this massive ship made up of many alien races from the Milky Way, and this group operates with the purpose of defending the interests of the Milky Way races. This means a few things. First of all, any species brought along from the Milky Way has a chance to pop up as a multiplayer character, which is exactly as it should be, but also the enemy types that we'll be going up against in the multiplayer are those species specifically opposing Milky Way interests. The only one we know of so far is the cat, and I'm really dying for some better footage of these guys, at least footage that I can legally use, but there will be other factions, and each of these enemy factions are designed to bring something different to the arena. Some are heavily shielded and armored, for which it's beneficial to have weapons and skills to deal with that. Some are specifically susceptible to headshots and precision skill play. Others are incredibly difficult to deal with at a distance, and you'll need to close the distance between you and them to be more effective. The basic multiplayer setup is the same. You and some buddies fight off increasingly difficult waves of enemies until the end, although the current number of waves is yet to be set. And then you were awarded experience to level up your character and currency to buy equipment. I prefer gold to silver, you know, for my metal. Starting a game is the same. You pick out a map, an enemy type, and a difficulty, but you can now also do more. Andromeda Multiplayer allows you to turn on or off additional modifiers to each session, similar to the way the combat simulator worked in the Citadel DLC. Two modifiers mentioned specifically are one that reduces your team's health and one that increases your team's damage output. And depending on what modifiers you have enabled, you will receive increased or decreased rewards for that match. It's unclear exactly how many of these modifiers there will be, but I am excited at the prospect of increasing the difficulty and the challenge or mixing things up. I think this is a terrific addition. Something else that's basically the same, but with a twist, is the way gear is awarded. You buy weapons and equipment in packs of randomness, for which you can use in-game currency or real-world money. I like this random system specifically because people can spend $20 to $30 of real-world money and not gain much of an advantage. But in addition to this system, you can use a new currency called Mission Funds, which allow you to buy items directly instead of relying on the random packs, though not all of the items will be available all of the time. The store will have a limited selection of items, and that selection will turn over on a regular basis, which should prevent players from being the victims of complete randomness. These mission funds can be earned by applying those modifiers I talked about to specific matches, and will have a use beyond this special store, which Bioware isn't ready to talk about yet, and I think that might have something to do with single-player campaign purchases. The last little tweak to the multiplayer is the addition of a prestige system. Each time you finish a match, you will also earn prestige experience towards all of the characters of the specific group you're using. They mention tank-like characters, so maybe all soldier and sentinel-type characters will share this set of XP. But the important part is that leveling up this category will add passive stat bonuses to all of your multiplayer characters. The example they used here was a permanent health increase. So in theory, the more you play, the stronger your multiplayer characters get. And I can see this being incredibly useful for those of us who want to put a lot of hours into multiplayer. And I can also see this system getting out of hand and making things way too easy. We'll have to see if there's some kind of cap or diminishing return system in play. So you can add match modifiers, you can directly purchase some equipment in limited amounts, and you can increase your passive bonuses the more you play, each of which adds something to the very cool multiplayer system they set up in Mass Effect 3. 
but ultimately the largest changes to Mass Effect multiplayer are going to come from the combat. Multiplayer, after all, is pretty much just gameplay. Huh. No, I hadn't really noticed that. Edie, should I have noticed that? No, Jet. It is not worth noting. You now have a jetpack for what you can use to hover an attack, or jump an attack, or simply evade. Probably the most important tweak here is that every ability is going to be on its own cooldown, which means you can detonate your own ability combos immediately with a 1-2 or maybe even a 1-2-3 punch. Melee weapons are also back in the mix, although that's not entirely new. I'd love to give you a bunch of combat details, but we literally haven't seen combat yet. That is supposed to change on December 1st at the Game Awards, which probably will give us a better idea of what we got in store, so keep your eyes out for that. Also, are you interested in playing Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer early? Head over to beacon.bioware.com to apply to participate in early betas and tech tests. You've got to answer a bunch of questions, but that might end up being worth it. And if you want more information about all of this stuff, including single player stuff, check out this month's issue of Game Informer. The article they have there is absolutely packed. As soon as we get more details on anything to do with Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer, or just Andromeda in general, I plan on bringing that to you in video form. So keep your eyes on MiniSGC for all of that, and if you like this video, please give it a like. But for now... I should go. <laughs>